Welcome to America's Heroes Group. And with that, welcome to America's Heroes Group, our roundtable and our partner, Heinz VA, particularly in women's health care. Today is Saturday, October 15th, 2022. October is Breast Cancer, Mental Health, Natural Disability, and Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Our host is Cliff Kelly to turn at the top of the hour. I'm Sean Claiborne, the co-host. Our executive producer is Glenda Smith, and our digital media producer is Ivan Ortega of Scouts Honor Productions. And we have, on the topic of Domestic Violence Awareness Month, we have Erin Hanrahan. She's a licensed clinical social worker for the Intimate Partner Violence Program, the IPV, and the Assistance Program Co Coordinator for Strength at Home. And she's also a certified coordinator and regional trainer for the Strength at Home Program. How are you doing, Erin? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. So let's talk about these programs and also the White Ribbon Initiative. So one of the things I wanted to bring up is you seem to have a passion for helping people. You've dedicated your career to helping people who are in, in bad situations, who are prone to violence and taking it out on their domestic partner. Tell us about these programs, what that is all about and what it's doing to try to help people in these situations. Yes, again, thanks for having me. And as you already mentioned, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Um, so at the VA, the Intimate Partner Violence Awareness um, Program, our theme this uh, this year is Building Relationship Health and Safety for Life, which aims to increase awareness of the critical importance of healthy and safe relationships throughout a person's lifetime. So our mission at our um, Intimate Partner Violence Assistance Program is to provide comprehensive, person-centered, recovery-oriented programming to veterans, their caregivers, families, partners, and VA employees who are experiencing or using intimate partner violence. So from my understanding, so one in three women, one in four men um, have a situation where they might have a partner where they're, that's being disabusing them in one way or another. I could, so, but for the military population, that's twice as likely. So what, what are some of the, the problems around um, domestic abuse? I mean, you see how pervasive it is. What are some of the extra challenges that military experience provides that creates that increased risk? Yeah, so we know that strong protective uh, relationships are a protective factor. Um, and so oftentimes when relationships are underneath stress, um, that that can actually start to break down the relationship. It can actually increase impulsivity um, and then again, create relationship stressors. So um, oftentimes there are specifically our program, again, is, is designed um, being person-centered, uh, recovery-oriented. We really want to target the behavior um, and the relationship stressors that are coming up. So we know that our veterans have had very unique experiences and stressors. Um, and some things, while these are not indicators um, or causes of IPV, we do know that there are some co-occurring indicators um, of IPV. And that can be um, post-traumatic stress disorder, it can be um, mental health concerns, it can be um, TBI, um, and also substance use. So just the difficult and difficulty kind of tolerating um, anger. And so when these factors, um, you know, are occurring, that also then tends to break or, or add stress to the relationship and so can to increase um, the, the possibility for, for intimate partner violence. So who's eligible to get uh, care or get help um, in the veteran population? Yeah. Yeah. So again, our program is comprehensive. So we provide services directly to veterans, their partners, and that can be a spouse or a dating partner, caregivers, and then VA employees. And the specific services that we offer within our intimate partner violence uh, program are screening. So we do uh, uh, safety and wellness screening. We do assessment. We do education. We provide prevention. If somebody is experiencing relationship distress or IPV, we can do some safety planning. We connect them with resources in the VA and outside of the VA. And then we offer some, in, some, some very specific interventions. We offer um, individual counseling, group counseling, and then couples therapy when indicated. So, how, so, so walk me through this process. How does someone, because I know a lot of times when you have um, people that are inside of a, a domestic violence a, a situation, they have a very difficult time speaking up and having that encouragement to step forward and say something. So how do you, how do you encourage that someone to, get, to step forward and say that, that, hey, you know, I'm having an issue with uh, someone at home? 
Yeah. So, you know, sometimes when we're experiencing relationship distress, we may not identify it as intimate partner violence or domestic violence. So an individual knows their relationship and knows what's happening and how that might be impacting them. And so part of me coming on today um, is really to raise awareness that we have this program because many people may not be aware for one. Also, um, who? Who is eligible? Um, so again, veterans, their partners, um, caregivers. So again, wanting them to know that services are available. Um, people can be referred to the program again when they're ready. They can either, uh, if a veteran, they can get a referral from their provider within the VA or people can self-refer. So what I want people to know is that I'm available. My direct line is 708-202-7243. So somebody can directly call me. And again, part of this is, is really on when somebody's ready. Maybe somebody is just wondering um, about their relationship. And again, having somebody to reach out to to get some education and some por- support is sometimes initially the first step. Um, So, again, I just want people to know that we are available and that we are here. Um, And and lastly, I guess what I want to mention when I was mentioning about the specific services. So, depending on who is the individual calling to receive those services. So, specifically for veterans, we have three programs that I just want to briefly mention. We have RISE. Um, which is an individual evidence-based treatment for those that are experiencing IPV or relationship distress that they can get some individual counseling. It is brief. Um, We also offer our Strength at Home program that you referenced um, in introducing me, and this is an evidence-based 12-week group intervention for veterans that are using anger, aggression, or violence within their intimate partner relationship. So again, this is a very small group of veterans that can enroll in a group treatment. And then we also have our Strength at Home Couples program, and this is an evidence based 10 week group intervention for veterans and partners. So it would be the couple that would join this group. And this is really designed to work on communication and reduce conflict that's happening with among the couple. And one thing I thought was interesting about strength at home is that it focuses also on the person committing the abuse and the person committing Mm -hmm. the abuse could be a man or a woman. Um, Yes. So what types of what triggers or what event has to happen, the how or the when or the what to make someone realize, hey, you know what, I have a problem. Because usually we think of the, especially in Hollywood and social media, we think of the abuser as like some big, you know, macho guy that, you know, is headstrong and he, you know, he drives really fast and reckless in his hot car and he's always, you know, being abusive to everybody and being mean to everybody. Right. But that's not always necessarily the case. That stereotype is not necessarily true. Right. Yeah, so we know that both males and females can experience and can use intimate partner violence. And again, affecting the relationship. So um, specifically with our Strength at Home intervention, this is a program that has been um, designed and tailored specifically for veterans. Um, so it, we, it has um, been offered at Heinz VA for the last six years. But with the development, this was really done with lots of effort from our um, National Center of the PTSD Clinic and the Department of Veteran Defense to create this program specifically. And we are the only program designed specifically and tailored for veterans. So really, We, um, and you'll oftentimes hear me um, today or or beyond, I'm using the language that those that use intimate partner violence and those that experience. We really want to target the relationship behaviors and let go of that language and that stigmatizing language. So veterans who can enroll in the Strength at Home program, again, may not identify with what we see oftentimes are those labels in the community. But if they're struggling with the relationship, Um, and they notice that they're using anger or they're having a difficult time communicating and it's coming out more in an angry or aggressive way, then they would be appropriate for this treatment. Um, So So let me interrupt for one second. So what what are some of those those stigma or those terms that people might think of as being a a stigma? Yeah, so oftentimes we hear uh, perpetrator, abuser, 
um, for those that are using anger and aggression within the relationship. And then on the other hand, those that are experiencing relationship distress or those that are experiencing violence in the relationship, oftentimes people refer to those individuals as survivors or victims. And that language is not recovery oriented. Oftentimes people, especially those that are experiencing IPV, may not want to be identified as a victim or a survivor. So the VA endorses different language. We use language that is um, inclusive to kind of really target behavior. So again, it's veterans that are using anger and aggression or those that are experiencing. Um, so, so again, we really want to target those relationship behaviors that again are having an impact uh, uh, together on the on the individual and on the couple. Let's circle back to that question a little more, uh, a little more deeper. So, what triggers yeah. um, um, a veteran or someone who's um, who's who is the person who is has the anger issues? What triggers them to want to get help? Because it seems like if you're in that that situation where you're the one that is that's the instigator or the person who has the anger issue that oftentimes you're doing it and don't want to change. There's right. usually resistance to change. So how, what usually triggers that change or, or a desire to get help? Yeah, so oftentimes it could be the partner um, is, you know, kind of um, maybe, men, you know, they, uh, having an ultimatum that the relationship, you know, identifying that and, and understanding that um, there are these stressors. And oftentimes, in my experience, veterans have been able to identify that they're responding and engaging and responding responding and communicating, having a difficult time communicating and using anger um, within that relationship. And again, it can be from verbal just to, um, you know, maybe making comments that are insulting or, um, uh, you know, name calling up to using actual physical aggression. So there is a continuum of behaviors. And oftentimes people can identify whether it's being pointed out by the partner or even by individually by themselves to kind of recognize that they might be handling their stressors in a way that is not helpful, in a way that is harmful to them and harmful to their par to their partner. So again, knowing, letting them know that they're, you know, this is a program that is available to them, which is why we look at, um, and one thing that I do want to actually kind of step back and be inclusive about is veterans who are either at risk. So if they kind of feel like they've been struggling for a while or feel like they oftentimes feel like they potentially could use anger and aggression, they would be appropriate to enroll in this treatment and intervention as well. So again, it's really looking at their relationship and being able to identify that there is a breakdown in kind of how they're dealing with stressors or maybe the difficulty in communicating or the first way that they find that they're communicating is again having this emphasis of just low frustration and anger again it could escalate to aggression and violence we offer this program and want veterans to know about it because we feel it's an early intervention we want to prevent it getting to a place of aggression and violence mm -hmm. So when, so if a person is on that, how do you recognize if you're in an abusive versus or an unhealthy relationship? Yeah, so there's a lot of fact, there's a lot of indicators that can I help people identify that they may be experiencing um, violence or aggression. So oftentimes, if somebody is very controlling um, around what you do, what you wear, where you go, that can be an indicator. Again, some pretty clear ones are using physical aggression towards somebody. Um, but again, we look at even those milder forms that are like, um, you know, in, in insulting the partner, name calling, um, yelling, um, intimidation. So any form of intimidation, um, you know, even any kind of aggressive behavior. If, if, if throwing a chair or throwing a phone happens, that you may, an individual may not necessarily identify that to be aggressive or violent. But on the partner's side, somebody who's experiencing that, that can be in, intimidating, that can be threatening. So behaviors like that are things that people want to watch out for. And if they're experiencing those things, they could be experiencing intimate partner violence or again, aggression or violence within the relationship. And so I just, again, want people to know that when in doubt, I want them to reach out and know that there is somebody here that they can talk to. Mm. Now, does the dynamic change? Because so far we talked about like the, the initial buildup of something that might get to a situation where it becomes physical. Does the dynamic change when children are involved? To say there's children in, in a relationship, maybe it has escalated to where it's physical or even maybe not even physical yet. 
does that change the mm -hmm. dynamic and does that raise the 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 urgency for maybe intervention yes for sure i mean we know that adults um so so as far as with domestic violence um these are adults that are in a relationship that are struggling and having um relationship discord and then again that can look uh, like in many different forms. However, when children are involved, children innocently are being impacted whether the couple realizes it or not. So children witnessing um, anger, aggression, or violence within the home or within this relationship definitely has an impact on their mental health, definitely has an impact on their emotional health, their well-being. So it definitely is a, a higher risk factor that we want to look at. And I oftentimes will have conversations with veterans when um, looking at the impact that their children might be exposed to with with these uh, with the relationship distress, so that oftentimes can be um, a motivator even to uh, looking at themselves and getting help. Because surely, I think oftentimes um, our, our children are a protective factor; they're important to us, and so veterans can oftentimes, when recognizing the impact that that can have in children and in the home. Um, that can be a factor to kind of ask for help and intervene. Because again, those are the um, you know children, their parents are their role models. And so what they're witnessing, again, has a direct impact. They don't necessarily have to be experiencing violence or aggression directly, but the exposure of it definitely has an impact on their emotional and, and well-being. So a lot of times when people, going back to the idea of having children in the households, a lot of times people that are experiencing the anger, or experiencing the violence, or experiencing the, the not to use the word, getting away from the word abuse, but experiencing that mm -hmm. negative um, interaction, unhealthy relationship. A mm -hmm. lot of times they don't speak up, they don't say anything because they're worried about the kids. They're worried right. about what will happen to the kids. They're worried about losing their kids. Um, they're worried about retaliation from the person who's being um, aggressive or angry. So how right. do you how do you overcome that to encourage them to get help and what ways can they what tactics or ways or strategies can they use to try to seek help? At least getting that, mm -hmm. that ball rolling, get that that situation, get the getting the, the situation for help started. Yeah. So the first is reaching out and talking to somebody, because I think oftentimes when I'm working with people, it is designed around about a lot of ed education, the impact that they're experiencing, even if this is somebody who's using aggression, of course, the impact that somebody who's experiencing, but again, the impact in the family and then being able to kind of look at those, all of those um, areas. And so it is about, you know, reaching out and kind of getting, um, you know, knowing what is available. So I think that, you know, by having a conversation about the um, current distress that an individual veteran or their, their partner is experiencing, you know, oftentimes one of the things that we'll do is some safety planning. And so if a situation that they're um, involved in or um, is dangerous or is, is um, of concerning to them, you know, we're going to do some safety planning around that. And that also includes some safety planning around the children. So what can you do um, if you are in a relationship that um, you are experiencing anger and aggression, how can you keep yourself safe? And I think you're right. Not only are the children concerned or fearful of speaking up, but individuals who may be um, in a relationship may not know where to turn or how to ask for help or know that help's available. So these are um, careful and delicate conversations to make sure that an individual has as much education my role is to really stand beside somebody, whether they are experiencing or using, to help them know that there are choices, there are options, and there are resources available to them. Because truly, domestic violence, intimate partner violence is preventable. So in order to access this type of help, do they have to go to the facility? Do they have to go to the VA? Or can they access it through a phone call or teleconferencing? Uh, maybe they live far yeah. away from the VA. How do they get access? Yeah, great question. So we offer all. So um, we offer in person. We offer virtual care. So that can be through our um, VVC program that veterans may be aware of, uh, our um, virtual care program, um, and maybe even often by the phone as well. So all of those um, all of those options are available um, to veterans or to their partners. And we do know that we've got um, many veterans that are further out from the medical center. So again, in con taking in that consideration, we do offer um, virtual care and have for a while and that's gone really well okay 
Uh, so we're riding out of time. So we have just a minute left. So we want to basically just want to make sure people know that this is something that's available to them. So we talked about a lot of things that can help people get help or reach out to something that is available to them. And you can do it discreetly. You can do it without your partner, you know, maybe enraging or in, infuriating your partner for doing it. And start the ball rolling. Get the help that you need so that way you can get protection. Because if your kids are involved, this yeah. is really, really important. I think you brought up some interesting things. Tell us one more time the phone yeah. number for how to reach you. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so veterans, partners, if you're experiencing relationship distress, if anything I've said has been, um, uh, you know, been of interest, please reach out directly to me. My phone number is 708-202-7243. On my voicemail, I also have the Illinois and Domestic Violence Hotline, that those are 24-7, that you can speak to somebody if I'm not available. Um, again, I just want you to know that domestic violence, intimate partner violence is preventable, and we have lots of support and resources. We are here for you. You are not alone. Help is available. Also, I'd encourage you to check out our Heinz VA website um, for information. And we also have our IPV um, public facing website, and that's www.socialwork.va.gov backslash IPV backslash index um, dot AST. Aaron and that Han is our again our public facing website so you can get more information. Aaron Hanrahan, this is thank you for your time. Licensed clinical social worker, partner of uh, IPV, the Intimate Partner Violence Program. This is America's Heroes Group. We'll be right back.